coronavirus right now this is something that is causing people to go in a panic mode people are scared people are, they don't know what to do they're hearing martial law now being declared lockdown after lockdown after lockdown city after city after city is being closed down grocery stores are going empty just the other day i was driving and people seem to be driving fast to and fro store shelves empty and i can see panic is beginning to fall upon people people are beginning hit by panic and you know what i notice of all this while people are all in panic everybody is becoming more selfish you see in a time of crisis true character is revealed the children of god they are going to remain calm the children of god they are not going to be selfish the wicked they are very selfish one person will take everything they know that they'll, they'll take 20 of one thing and pile it onto their their shopping cart and they see someone who who wants it somebody who's struggling to go get to they they, they you can tell somebody is somebody's really like their eyes can tell that they really needed that thing but then it's like oh well it's your it's up to you and then they take the cart and now people are becoming more vicious the wicked surround us the wicked are everywhere let this be a wake-up call for you there's a sign of martial law going going from state to state from city to city country to country this thing went from the east moving westward the judgments of god are moving from the east moving we moving westward just as the lightning that shineth out from the east even the shining thunder the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. Everything shifts from the east to the west. MashaAllah is here. MashaAllah is here, my friends. We are here. And guess what? In the midst of all this, President Trump declares a national emergency for coronavirus. And while he declares coronavirus to be a national emergency, what else does he declare? He declares on the same note of emergency he declares sunday is a national day of prayer when was this signed this was signed on friday you see in the midst of all this in fact let's read the news article and then we're also going to look at what what president trump declared because this is all over his twitter fox news trump declares sunday a national day of prayer amid coronavirus crisis President Trump declared on Friday a national day of prayer for this upcoming Sunday shortly after declaring state of emergency amid the amid the fast spreading coronavirus pandemic and he says and I quote we are a country that throughout our history has looked to God for protection and strength in times like these Trump tweeted no matter where you may be I encourage you to turn towards prayer in an act of faith. Together, we will easily prevail. Do you see what? Here's what I want you guys to capture. Right now, America is being turned is being turned to look where to to look towards God. Right, right. But here's the thing that's that's taking place. In all of this, people are being turned to acknowledge Sunday as a national day of prayer. It is a national day of prayer. You see, this connects with the National Sunday Law. This, ladies and gentlemen, is connected to the National Sunday Law. National Sunday Law, when enacted, this will be the law that ensures that people all turn to worship on Sundays and that should, those, should people refuse to come and worship and honor on that day, then God's wrath is being poured upon the earth because of them. So you are to acknowledge Sundays as a national day of prayer. So turn to God in prayer on Sundays. Trump has just declared this. Now here's the thing. People are, are reading this and yes, it sounds good. It sounds good. Let's all turn to God in prayer this Sunday. Sundays are a national day of prayer. You see, when people don't realize that this actually 
is connected directly to the mark of the beast because guess what? The beast of Revelation chapter 13 is the papacy. The papacy declared from their own mouths that their mark is Sunday. So that means Sunday and the mark of the beast is it goes hand in hand. Why? Because Sunday is the mark of the beast. Now here's the thing, don't get too caught up into thinking, so long as I don't get the mark of the beast, I'm saved. The Bible says, save he that, that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Many people have the name of the beast and they have no idea. You see in the Bible, names are synonymous to character. The name of the Lord, when he was proclaiming his name before Moses, he began to declare his name and began to say the Lord, merciful, long-suffering, slow to anger, right? He shows mercy to thousands of them that love him and keep his commandments. He forgives iniquities, but he will not by any, by, by, he, he will not by any means clear the guilty. He will visit them, right? Now here's the thing. That's the name of the Lord. Remember the name Jacob meant deceiver. While well, Jacob deceived throughout his, throughout his life. And then God gave him a new name. Israel, which meant, which meant overcomer with God. When we go to the book of Revelation, we see a person that has the name, a name written on her forehead, and that is Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. That is the church, the papacy, seated upon the beast with seven heads and ten horns. Revelation chapter 17 reveals to us that the name of this beast, of, I mean the name of the woman, is synonymous to her character. She is a harlot, or a prostitute, or a whore. She is an abominable woman. She commits fornications with the kings of the earth. Right? She is also a mother, the mother of harlots. All of her daughters are harlots. Why are they harlots? Because they all bear her mark, and her name is written on their foreheads also. So here's the thing, my friends. We are here at the close of time. Probation is about to close. And why? Are people playing around with sin at this time? You backsliders, why are you still backsliding right now? Do you not see? Think about this. Trump declares this, this coronavirus a national emergency, and then he declares a national day of prayer. You see, everybody's attention right now is being directed to God. Trump is now declaring that everybody should turn towards God on Sundays. Let this be a warning for you. Now for those who are Adventists, those Seventh-day Adventists who are backsliders, who have been playing around, you thought that, how long do you think that you could get away with your backsliding for? How long do you think you could get away with your backsliding for? You need to wake up. Don't fool yourself. Not one in 20 Adventists will make it to the Kingdom of Heaven. Remember that. The Bible tells us that a very small amount of people will make it to the kingdom of heaven. The question is, will you be in that number? Or are you going to be in a greater, in a greater number of people who are going to be damned? Many Adventists are sleeping, acting as if they have all day. You're fools. You're foolish. Stop fooling yourself. You knew that this message is, that, that this truth is there and it's coming to pass. And you still are playing around. You better wake up, turn off your, your, your Snapchat, turn off all that foolishness. Turn away from all that garbage that you've been wasting your time on. How long do you think you can get away with your sins for? How long do you think you can go and post yourself on social media like a harlot for? How long, you foolish Adventist? You think that just because you're an Adventist that you, that you are owed the kingdom of heaven? No. With or without you, God is going to finish the work. With or without you, God is going to raise up a last day army. Don't expect God to wait for you. God is going to raise up an army one way or another. And God will raise up an army that never even professed that name Seventh-day Adventist. Take that in. God will go and call his people. And you know what? They are not pastors. You know what? They are young, full of energy. They were in sin, but God is now calling them out of darkness and into His marvelous light. And they are the ones who are going to finish the work. So if you still want to remain a backslider, 
you want to remain a fool? You can go ahead and remain a backslider all you want. You can go ahead and remain a fool all you want. You can go ahead and post your picture on, on social media, show your muscles. You can go ahead and post yourself on social media, show your skills to people. You can go ahead and post yourself on social media, make yourself look like a whore for everybody to look at you. Be like everybody else, yes? Guess what? With or without you, God is raising up an army and whether you are ready or not, probation will close upon you. Let this be a warning for you. You think this is it? I've got a specific warning for all Seventh-day Adventists. In fact, keep an eye out for that video. A warning for all Seventh-day Adventists. You are fooling yourselves if you think that God is going to wait for you to finish the work. You are fooling yourselves if you think that God is going to wait. Are the Advent people ready? No! God is calling out an army with or without you. God is going to raise an army with or without you. God is going to finish the work. That's the terrifying part that you need to wake up to. You see, that, I realized that already. That's why I say, Father, with you, I want, I want, I want to be included in our army. I want to be included in your, in, in your, in your army of saints. I want to be included in that number, Father. Call me, Lord. Let me be among your remnant. If you don't recognize this, if you don't realize this, then you are a fool. Everything that you thought you knew, you thought that you could be able to play around with sin and come back anytime. Now is the time for you to turn away from that sin. Consider this as a last minute wake up call for you. Come to the Lord now. The door is open. For how long will it be open for? We don't know. But all I can say is, don't fool yourself into thinking you can go and play with sin. You can entertain yourself all you want. You can play around with sin. You can do this on social media. Post yourself. Make yourself look like a laughing stock. You see, ladies and gentlemen, children are going to begin to pro prophesy. Children are going to rise up and start declaring the truth of, the, of, of our Heavenly Father before the world. They will declare for people to fear God and give glory to Him for the hour of His judgment is come. They will declare to the world, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. They will declare to the world saying, if any man worship the beast in his image, the same shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And they shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. They will declare to the world, children, I'm talking six-year-olds, eight-year-olds, ten-year-olds, they will go and declare to people, saying, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus Christ, concluding the great controversy. With or without you, God is going to raise up an army. Children are going to be crying out. You see, I had a dream that revealed all of this to me. One time, the Lord revealed to me a dream where I saw people walking to and fro. And as, children, as people were walking to and fro, an announcement came from up above and it said, Jesus is coming, get ready. Boom, it was sudden. And you know what? This sudden moment of realization that Jesus was coming struck a nerve in everybody's hearts. They were filled with fear. And I began to see the elderly people, the scholars. People began to say, what? We were waiting for this event to happen and that event to happen and this event to happen. They were unprepared for that solemn announcement. Shortly after I saw this, then I saw children as young as six year olds, as young as seven, as young as eight. These children began to go and prophesy to the elderly people saying, Jesus is coming. Are you ready? Jesus is, some, is coming. Get ready. That's what children were doing. That I began, I was allowed to feel the fear that fell upon the people. And I tell you, the fear and the trembling that falls upon the unbelievers and the elderly people, the foolish people, the fear that fell upon them is a fear that you do not want to understand. You don't even want to feel that fear. And I tell you, my friends, Children will be raised to finish the work. With or without you, God is going to finish the work. With or without you, God, God Almighty is going to raise up an army. I want to be included in that army. 
We are, this is the time that prayer is needed more than ever. I may look crazy right now, but I'm telling you, this message is life. The gospel is life. We need to turn to the Lord now. Probation is lingering just for a little bit longer. It's going to close. But for how long will it be open for? We don't know that. Get ready for the coming of the Lord. Jesus Christ is coming. Jesus Christ is coming. That's the best news. This is the good news. The good news of salvation. Jesus Christ is coming. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to hold on to Him like never before. Now is the time for hold, to hold on to our Lord and our Savior. Question is, will you turn to Him? Are you a backslider? Turn away from your backsliding. Are you a hypocrite? Turn away from your, hip, from your hypocrisy. Pastors, I've got a message for the pastors. I've got a message for every pastor out there. In fact, I'm go there's a warning for every single person. You pastors, there's a solemn warning for all pastors. I'm going to do this in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a different video. Pastors are going to be held accountable for a lot of... Oh my goodness, you have no idea what awaits for, for, for people who claim to be pastors. Yet they were never watchmen. Those who claim to be pastors. Yet they never prepared their congregation for the, thing, for the coming ordeals. You are going to be held accountable for everything. Take this and let this be a warning for you. Father in heaven, please, oh Lord... I ask that you please grant us your Holy Spirit. We are in need of you. We are in need of you right now. I am in need of you, Father. I am praying, O oh Lord, for those who are watching this video. Please touch their hearts and help them to be closer drawn to you. I am but a sinner. But let me be that sinner who was saved by the blood of the Lamb. Those who are watching this video, though, who, whatever sins that they're struggling with, please forgive them. Cleanse them, Father. Help them that they, should be, that they should all turn to you before it is too late. Probation is about to close. And we are witnessing your hands of mercy, slowly but surely, rapidly even, withdrawing that protective barrier from the earth. Please, Father, I am praying and asking that you please help us to be strong in you. May we hold on to you. Let us hold on to our Heavenly Father. Strengthen us, my Father. You are merciful. We truly believe that. And we truly believe, Father, that your love is still available for us, for us, your people. And I know, Father, that your eyes are turned upon your children, the righteous, and that your countenance to us is beautiful. Your ears have been inclined to hear us. I truly believe that, Father. I ask, O oh Lord, for you to please grant us protection from heaven above, Strengthen us in these last days. Let no fear be in our hearts. We may see martial law here and martial law there. We may hear of all the impending dooms, the things that are taking place around us. But let us hold on to you. Help us to work our salvation now with fear and with trembling. When let's turn our hearts towards you. Please, help us now. Help us, Father. Strengthen us. Those who struggle with whatever addictions that they have, please forgive them. Help them. Strengthen them. Give them courage and give them power. Give them strength to overcome the temptations. Help me, O oh Lord. Help me that I should stand before you. Let me stand strong in your name. Please give unto me the spirit of boldness. Give my wife the spirit of boldness. Give my child your Holy Spirit. I ask, Father, that you strengthen all of my siblings. Help all of us, Father. Let us stand strong in your name. Please, let Jesus Christ be uplifted above all. Let Yeshua be uplifted above all. Please hold on to us. Never let go of us, nor forsake us, I pray. In Jesus' merciful and mighty name I ask. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, a series of warnings are going to be presented on this channel. This channel, I don't know for how long we, you, we may have this platform for. But this channel, I'm going to use this channel to give the final warnings to the best of my abilities. And I'm going to go and do my, my best to evangelize also. You see, probation is closing, and we have to do our part. I need to do my part. The series of warnings that are coming upon this channel, I pray that you would stay tuned. Because these warnings are to get you to turn away from sin. These warnings are going to be directed to pastors. These warnings are going to be directed towards those who are knowingly sinning. 
this, this, this series of warnings are going to be declared to all people who claim to be Seventh-day Adventists. This series of warnings are going to be declared upon all Christians of all denominations. This, this series of warnings, please open your eyes. Turn to the Lord before it's too late. This is the Controversy 7. Thank you for tuning in and for joining me. You take good care of yourselves. Be safe, be blessed, and I'll see you guys next time.